Hey guys, uh, thanks for watching. And if you are still subscribed to my channel, The Inform Forum, thank you for subscribing to that. I wanted to actually do a video and sorry, I look like shit. Um, my lips are kind of a little messed up, which sounds weird. So I might be talking oddly. And I also hope you can hear me okay. I got a notification on my computer that um, for some reason there's something wrong with my audio. So hopefully this turns out okay. But I wanted to do a video um, about Lindy Lee specifically. Um, she's been making the rounds on a lot of channels, a lot of shows. She even went on Ben Shapiro's show, which I'm going to talk about. Um, so I wanted to tell you a little bit of a personal story uh, relating to Lindy Lee. So I actually know her in real life. Um, I live just outside of Philadelphia. And so a little bit of background on Lindy Lee. She actually voted for Senator Sanders in 2016 in the primary election. And then after that, she voted for Hillary Clinton in the general election. And when Trump won, like a lot of us on the left, even in the center and even a lot, not a lot, but some on the right, were very devastated that he won. Um, and because she was so devastated, she actually felt the need to run for Congress in PA's uh, 5th Congressional, well, then the 7th Congressional District, which became the 5th Congressional District, due to um, the lines, the PA lines for uh, House being redrawn. So she ran. Now, during this time period, I actually... Um, incidentally met her at City Hall by accident. We had a brief conversation and I, she then told me that she had to go because she was going to go dial for dollars. What that meant to me, and I was actually disappointed to find, find this out because she was the second person, she was my number two in the race because um, I live in the fifth formerly the 7th Congressional District. So what that means is she's taking big money. She took big money for her congressional race. She didn't win. Now, with big money comes ties to the establishment, comes ties to industry. You have to somehow repay that industry and re repay those people that gave you money in some way, shape, or form. It, that's just the way that it works. So at this point, what she's doing is now repaying them by one, supporting Joe Biden, two, making all these rounds smearing Bernie bros, which everyone has, has supporters that are awful online, everyone. I mean, Elizabeth Warren, Michael Bloomberg, Pete Buttigieg, Amy Klo Klobuchar, whoever else, Joe Biden, all of them have, well, had, outside of Joe Biden anyway, all of them have awful supporters online. That's not my point. My point is she's making these rounds and smearing because she's repaying the establishment for what they did, did for her, for her congressional race. And for her, it's paying off nicely. But what I wanted to do is actually, unfortunately, and I really don't want to do this, but I feel like I need to, is just show you a clip of her on um, Ben Shapiro's show. And I'll be it. I actually haven't watched it. I just found out she did this, not even 10 minutes ago. So I haven't watched this clip, but I wanted to show it to you. So I'm going to be reacting to it in real time with you and probably probably be infuriated by it. So let me share my screen. Oh, well, I've watched two seconds of it, but. We're joined on the line by Lindy Lee. Lindy currently helps to lead Asian American political outreach for Joe Biden, was picked to be one of his DNC delegates for the third congressional district of Pennsylvania. She's a proud, moderate, conservative Democrat, ran for Congress in the previous cycle and holds a leadership position within the DNC. She's been in the news recently because she's been the subject 
of some pretty vicious attacks by the Bernie Bros online. Lindy, thanks so much for joining the Ben Shapiro Show. Thank you so much for having me. So, Lindy, why don't you explain, first of all, what exactly happened here? What made you, a Democrat, the subject of so many attacks by the Bernie Bros? And, and who are they and what did they do? It was unbelievable. This has been going on for months now. This wasn't an isolated incident. It started in January when somebody thanked me for supporting a Jewish community. Every time there was an anti-Semitic attack, I would tweet about it and condemn it. And just someone thanked me for being a Ruth. And for people who aren't familiar with that, Ruth is somebody who wasn't Jewish herself, but supported the Jewish community. And in that tweet, in the same tweet, she said, Sanders is a self-hating Jew. And so I retweeted that um, primarily because she thanked me for sticking up for Jews. And I thought that was a perfectly fine thing to say, but that just set the Bernie bros off. Um, so I was suddenly called an anti-Semite, a piece of racist and all sorts of things that I probably shouldn't be repeating on air, but it was just, it was traumatic for me. I'm a member of APAC. I support APAC. This is just, it's inconceivable to me. I go to Shabbat. Most of my friends are Jewish. So to hear suddenly that I am a bigot was just unbelievable. And, and I had a, um, I got a confession from one of these money bros saying that. Okay. Quickly. I just want to say a lot of people say are saying right now that there are two old white men in the race. That's factually incorrect. On its surface. Sure. Yeah. I get that. Here's the thing. Bernie is Jewish. He would be the first Jewish president. God, I said that, like, Mel Brooks. Sorry, I've been watching Mel Brooks stuff. <laughs> um, but point is, Bernie is, and would be, hopefully will be, the first Jewish presidential candidate. Or the first Jewish president. Um, the other person... The other thing I want to say is the person she's mentioning, Ruth Cowart David Davidson, I believe that's her name anyway. I could be wrong. Um, and if I am, I am wrong, dearest apologies to you. Um, but the thing is, <laughs> she was terrible to me. I remember her being terrible to me on Instagram back in 2016 and 2015. <sighs> the whole thing is just ridiculous. And here's the thing. She's talking about Jewish stuff here, being a Jew. She's not Jewish. She is a Christian woman. She's an Asian American. Stop using Jewish people to suit your own ends, Lindy. Stop. That is anti-Semitic. My actual crime wasn't anti-Semitism. My actual crime was political moderation and being on the conservative side of the Democratic Party. And frankly, if they keep this up, there aren't going to be many of us left. And so that happened a month ago. But just, uh, just last week, I tweeted a video that I'd actually been posted many years ago, and in that video, Bernie Sanders praises communist Russia. And here's the other thing I want to talk about. So she was talking about um, APAC. Now, APAC, they don't really recognize all um, people that live in Israel. They just really recognize white, Jewish, individuals they don't represent arab jews they 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 just don't they don't represent the people that live <laughs> live there i mean that's that's kind of the thing and i mean i, I it's, it's hard for me to really say much more there just because i'm not jewish i'm an atheist um I'm an atheist, borderline, existentialist, Taoist, Hindu-esque person. Um, I mean, even a transcendentalist. I, I, I kind of believe in making your own, um, forging your own path sort of a thing. But let's continue with this horrific video. 
And I tweeted it out. It was fine. I mean, I got the usual, you know, flack from brain supporters. So it wasn't anything intolerable. It was just like, you know, brain worms and you're stupid and stuff like that. So Bill Crystal retweeted it and that launched the chain reaction. Um, various high profile commentators retweeted the video at all and millions of people ended up seeing that video. It was included in the 60 minutes clip. And that was the beginning of just um, a week of truly just unbelievable hell. They went after my brother who's still in college, a teenager. Um, you know, I was like frankly afraid to show my face. <laughs> I stayed in my apartment for a number of days. It was harrowing. I've never seen anything like it. I just remember staring into the darkness at 4 a.m. thinking like, my heart is pounding. How do I make it stop? Just thousands of attacks. Like, Lindy, you're a pathological liar. And all I did was share a video of things he actually said. And frankly, they gave, gave me much more credit. I'm not that technologically advanced. I don't know how to dub voices or change videos. It's what he said. It was extracted from Vermont, Vermont Public Television. Right. And sorry, sorry for going on and on, but this whole thing has just been such a traumatic experience. Well, I mean, it is true. And the Bernie bros are widely known for being mm -hmm. some of the worst people online. As far as the, the Jewish attack, it's always ironic to me when I hear people who are very upset at anybody who, who makes an oblique reference to Bernie Sanders not being an incredible Jew, because he's very, of course, proud to be a Jew when he is hobnobbing with open anti-Semites like Linda. Here is where Ben Shapiro is going to try to get you to believe his shit and his lies and watch, wait for the grift, because it's coming. Our story, Elhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib, and then recently came out as in this exactly. week and said that he's going to not go to APAC because APAC is filled with racists. Well, simultaneously. It is filled with racists. That is correct. <laughs> it literally is. I, I, I can't even, I can't. Embracing. A, foreign aid to Hamas. It's like, it's just, I, I have questions for people. Seriously? Ben Shapiro is saying Bernie embraces foreign aid to Hamas? You've got to be, got to be kidding me. People who are, who are deeply concerned about Chris Matthews talking about World War II in a oh completely different context yeah. and suddenly he's an anti-Semite, but Bernie... He was literally equating... Bernie, a Jewish person, and his family, and his supporters, honestly, to what happened. Oh my God. What Chris Matthews said is anti Semitic. And if, if you don't understand that, I don't know how to help you. Bernie can be as anti-Israel and hobnob with as many anti any as many anti-Semites as he wants, and and if you, Bernie is an anti-Israel, and a Jewish person cannot be anti-Semitic towards himself. Point this out, then this makes you an anti-Semite. So, how much of this did you feel was was organized? So, I remember back in 2016, uh, I had a fairly unpopular position. I didn't vote for either of the major candidates, and I got just waves of hate, particularly that. from the alt right. Uh, and it, it felt like it was organized at, at a fairly high level, that it was a specific group of trolls, and they were just going to just hit you and hit you and hit you and hit you. How much of this do you think is coming from a, an organized place? How much of you think do you, of it, do you think is just sort of Twitter mobbing? And frankly, what do you think Bernie should do about it? Because I'm, I'm okay. Real talk. It's actually interesting that he didn't vote for either major candidate. But I don't actually know who he voted for. I don't watch Ben Shapiro. This is honestly the first time I'm even watching it, a complete video of Ben Shapiro. I will admit, Lindy, I'm, I'm a little bit of split mind. On the one hand, I think that Bernie has an actual obligation to tell his people to shut up. On the other hand... No candidate can honestly control all of the shit that their candidate says online. Which, by the way, happy International Women's Day! And I mean, Bernie has a lot of followers, and it would be very difficult for him to, to control all of his followers. How much of this do you think is due to Bernie, and how much of it do you think is just... The radicalism of Bernie's agenda attract radicals. I absolutely think that the rot stop, starts at the top. You have people like Glenn Greenwald um, and David, the guy who you know always releases doctored videos. These people are on his staff. 
you know, that he hired them. He hired the most vicious attackers. To say that he has no control over his supporters is completely disingenuous. And Stop, Lindy. Stop. Yes, it is disingenuous. No presidential candidate can control the stuff that is said online. Can Joe Biden control what you're saying right now? Can he just come to your door and give you a call? Well, probably. Can he whatever and say, Lindy, you have to stop saying this about Bernie bros and Bernie supporters. You're erasing women of color. You're erasing women. You're erasing Hispanic women. You're erasing undocumented people. No, he can't. And it's just, um, what does he, uh, what does his supporters hope to achieve? I'm not going to suddenly vote for him because he called me a, that's, that's, I am so never Bernie. It's, I, I can't even describe it. She voted for him in 2016. She literally ran on his congrat. She ran on his agenda in 2018. Are you fucking kidding me? And it's almost funny how he almost makes Trump look good. And I, by the way, I just want to make clear that I've never once been attacked by bad people, not once. And I've never had kind things to say about President Trump. I'm not, you know, I'm not, never in my life have I praised him, but they've never attacked me. They've never tried to make me feel subhuman. Um, and frankly, it's just, I can't believe it. And people are actually going to remove me from the delegate ballot. I, I have just she should absolutely be removed for all these stupid smears she's been doing. So yes. Screenshot of Bernie supporters plotting to take me off the ballot to disqualify me. That is just, it just shows me who they are. So, Lindy. You know what? You've shown who you are, Lindy. You have shown you are a, you are a grifter. You only are in this for power. And you never really cared about Senator Sanders' agenda in 2016. You never really cared about his agenda and your agenda when you ran in 2018. So, honestly, I'm not surprised by any of this. But, excuse me, I am infuriated. I am infuriated. Because I know you. You are a nice person. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Um, but this, you're just being disingenuous and you know it. Somewhere deep down, you know it. It's just you're getting money, you're doing the rounds. So keep on, keep on, girl. Keep on making that moolah. We all need it. I get it. But you're doing it the wrong way. Sorry, not sorry. Looking at, at sort of where the Democratic Party is going, obviously, South Carolina is widely perceived to be sort of Joe Biden's last stand, that if Biden doesn't hold back Bernie in South Carolina, basically this race is over. Michael Bloomberg is tossing hundreds of millions of dollars into the race, but it looks like it could be too little too late if Bernie's already won the first few primaries and if he's got... So obviously, this happened about a week or so ago. Let me look at the date. Um... Oh, wow, this happened on February 27th. So really since then, we've had, I mean, Klobuchar, Steyer, Bloomberg, Buttigieg. Is there anyone else? All drop out and endorse Biden. Obviously, Bernie didn't do as well as we expected him to on Super Tuesday. Um... There are some things that are worrying for that re regarding turnout, especially of um, young voters, which could be unfortunately a reason why he lost, which is mind boggling to me because that's the base that that's his core base. Um, don't know if we really need to watch the rest of this video, but just for sake of it, we'll watch the rest of it. But uh, I'd like to say that if you can today, um, phone bank or canvas if you're in one of the states that vote on Mar or March 10th, right? March, gosh, I should know the date. March 10th, um, do everything you can to canvas. 
do everything you can to talk to people to get them to vote. It's really important. There still is a path for Bernie to get the plurality of delegates, but we need to do everything that we can. So let's watch the rest of this horrific video. Got all the momentum, and Bloomberg stepping in last minute is unlikely to stop the, the Bernie surge. Let's assume for a second that Bernie does win the nomination. How many people do you think are like in the Democratic Party? Obviously, Biden has a very solid base of support. How many people do you think are actually never Bernie? Uh, how many people do you think are going to stay home if Bernie is the nominee? And, and how many people do you think are just going to swivel behind Sanders no matter what, just because they, they dislike Trump? All right. Bernie is the person that will beat Trump. Here is why. He, won, gets the most crossover support from Trump voters. Sorry. Um, two, he brings out independents. He brings out non-voters. Biden does not bring out not non-voters. He does not bring out young voters. Zoomers are not going to vote for Joe Biden. Zoomers are n people from the, the Sunrise Movement are not going to vote for Joe Biden. People in DSA are not going to vote for Joe Biden. Young people on the left, period, are not voting for Joe Biden. You need us to win. You don't need the moderate liberal that Lindy Lee here is being, which, whatever, moderate conservative... Honestly, she's basically just a grifter doing it for attention and money. That's it. Um, so really, you want the person that's running in the general election against Trump, against an incumbent, to have energy, to have passionate supporters that are going to gonna go to the polls and take time out of work. Because a lot of young people, a lot of people today, they make nothing. They're not going to take their time to go to a polling place and vote for a candidate that's not going to do anything for their life. It's pretty much plain and simple. So, you want to vote for Joe? A vote for Joe is a vote for Trump. A vote for Bernie is a vote for the future. That's sad. La last group that you mentioned, I find that extremely despicable. I just, um, I don't want to never vote for Bernie under any circumstances. And I'm a Democrat and I've never voted. For she voted for Bernie in 2016. For Republican for president. But um, this is just too much. It's like psychic trauma. And I have, um, by the way, the Bernie group infiltrated our Twitter DM groups and screenshot of private discussions. So that's just a picture of who they are. And um, those people in the groups that I mentioned, they are never Bernie, and there are no, we have hundreds of people, and we didn't start out this way. His supporters made us this way. You voted for Bernie in 2016. Well, Lindy Lee, really appreciate your time, and uh, and thanks for speaking truth, even when it's unpopular inside your own party. Lindy Lee, of course, is helping to lead Asian American political outreach for Joe Biden. Lindy, good luck on everything, and we'll keep in touch and, and hopefully check back in with you as the election moves forward. Thank you so much, and I'm really proud of you for speaking your truth, too. Oh, I appreciate it. Speaking as grift is more like it. Oh, Jesus. All right. Um, that's really all I wanted to talk about. Let me stop sharing my screen. But thanks, guys, for watching this. Um, press the subscribe button if you want. I don't have a Patreon or anything. I'm not really into all that. Um, but... Anyway, enjoy your Sunday. Phone bank if you can. Donate if you can. Um, thanks.